All right, so here we are with our next project. And what we're going to be doing is growing this Saracenia sedicina as an aquatic plant. Now you might be wondering, why would I attempt to grow this as an aquatic plant? Well, in the wild, where these grow in the panhandle and kind of northern area of Florida, southern Georgia, uh, they are frequently submerged underwater. And this was, uh, you know, posed on a forum years ago, and recently I've seen it pop back up on Facebook, uh, where people are wondering, well, what if you just had this underwater all the time? Uh, that's not what happens in nature. Of course, the water level goes down, uh, but of course we're going to be using clean distilled water in here, and I'm going to be circulating the water uh, with this water filter, you know, just a aquarium filter. Uh, and we're just gonna see what happens. Now, I have a second pot of this. It's a uh, Saracenia sedicina from Nassau County, Florida. Pretty decent shape and coloration on this. Um, and we're not gonna use this whole pot. We're going to break off a division, uh, pot it up. I have a black pot somewhere. Uh, put the potted plant in here, uh, kind of see if we can anchor it down. Put the filter in here. Uh, bring it inside and grow it under my LED lights uh, year-round and have the filter running and just see what happens. Uh, so let me go split this up and uh, let's start constructing this aquarium. I was going to say terrarium, but I guess this is technically uh, the Saracenia Aquarium. Okay, so um, I wasn't really able to get divisions off of it because the rhizome is still stuck together. Uh, but since I have another one that should make divisions this year anyways, ah, whatever. And I guess if it starts declining, hopefully I'll notice and be able to take it out. Uh, but I guess I'm pretty confident that this setup will work. Uh, so what I did was I potted it in sphagnum moss so we don't have junk floating around in the water uh, like peat moss would probably do. Um, and then I took this plastic window screen type material, I cut a slit in it, and I put the plant through it before I potted it. I wrapped this all around, zip tied it to the sides here. Uh, I'm going to secure that a little bit more, uh, but basically this should be good. Now, the more important part is, does it fit in here? And it does. Uh, and so basically that's it. Uh, the only thing we have to do now is put this filter inside of here. And we don't really need the cartridges because the main thing that we're interested in uh, is the movement of water to prevent stagnation. Uh, there's no, uh, you know, food waste inside of this aquarium uh, to require us to have um, the filter cartridges uh, so that's pretty much uh, good to go. All I'm going to do is fill this up with distilled water, put it underneath my LED grow lights, and plug in the filter. So let's go do that right now. All right, so we're going to fill up this aquarium all the way to the top with distilled water. We're going to plug in the filter so the water is circulating to help prevent stagnation. And then this whole setup was under my white Durolux LEDs. So the first thing that I had to deal with was the fact that the plant wanted to float because there's air spaces in the pitchers. The sphagnum moss wants to float. The plastic pot wants to float. Uh, so I put wooden skewers through that plastic mesh, and then I just taped that down uh, to keep the whole thing submerged. Now, is that the nicest, most appealing look? Of course not, but my goal was just whatever works for the experiment to see what happens as long as it stays underwater. I don't really care. So that was tackled and solved. Now, what was the result of this experiment? Well, first of all, the water grew a lot of algae, surprisingly. Even with the filter there, um, I guess there were enough nutrients, either from the decomposing bugs in the pitchers or from the sphagnum moss itself, which can grow algae, uh, to grow algae inside of the water. Uh, so I could have done water changes, I guess, if I was less lazy, but it didn't really affect the plant too much. The biggest thing is that this plant outgrew the aquarium. So it was in here for six months, and there were no issues in terms of anything rotting or the pitchers dying off. Um, you can just see that they grew out of the surface of the water. Now, this isn't etiolation, which is when you know a plant is light-starved and it grows taller, uh, because you can see all the pitchers are red. 
so the lights were strong enough to color up the pictures, which means this was getting enough light. What I think is happening is the fact that this plant just wants to revert to its normal growing habit, so it's going to get these tall pitchers to try and escape from the water. Uh, so overall, that's the result of the experiment. Um, could I put this in a taller container and see if it grows underwater more long term for like a year or two years, uh, perhaps? Uh, but at least now you can see an initial result where it can grow underwater for at least six months and it will be fine. Uh, only thing that happens is the pitchers start getting really, really tall. Uh, so that's the result for now, I guess, if you have any questions or comments you can feel free to post them down in the comment section uh, down below uh, but like i said that's the result of this little experiment that i ran uh, during the course of this growing season